Hey guys, Steve for PC Photo Solutions here, and first and foremost, I want to thank you guys for the comments on my recent video. Uh, actually, I'm going to give a shout out here. Ivan Jovanovic uh, actually recommended to do an overclocking video on more of a how-to. So that's what this video is about. Now, what I'm going to show you guys is the basic overclocking for most B350 boards because it's more of an offset mode than a manual mode. Now the settings I'm going to use is eh, kind of like a good starting point, but you really want to tweak your settings. I really don't recommend north of 1.4 volts for 24-7 or long-term use. So we're going to try to stick to like 1.3875 or 1.375, somewhere in that range. So just as a precaution for you guys. Um, that way nobody's frying some chips, but this is more of a, like a, a how-to and what settings to look at and Hopefully this helps you guys out a lot without further ado This is my first time using screen capture with Elgato for another you know, uh, Computer rather other than like live streaming. So hopefully this works out for you guys without further ado Let's take a look at how to overclock on Ryzen Okay, so there's two kinds of overclocking you're gonna see on Ryzen one of them is going to be offset and one's going to be direct. So on this board, this is the Asus B350M-A and this is actually going to have offset. So we're in the AI tweaker right now in the BIOS as you can see up here, AI tweaker. And first things first is we're going to change the core ratio to, we'll do 3.7. So that'll be a 37 X multiplier. We'll keep everything else the same for now. We're going to change the CP voltage to offset mode. Keep it at a plus. And here's where it tells you 1.875 is the default voltage. So we're going to add maybe, let's do 0 0.2. So I'll bring it to about right around 1.3875, give or take. Okay, then we're gonna go down one. This should be the SOC voltage. Let's turn this also to offset. And then we're, this by default is 0.85. We're gonna add 0.25, this make it 1.1. That should be a good spot to mess with. A little too far and then we're going to move over to exit and then down to save and reset and and here we go we're booting back up here so you just wait for your slash screen and everything to come up and generally speaking, something like this is going to be relatively stable. So what we'll do first things first is we're going to go over to CPU Z. Double click it. Hit yes. Hopefully we don't get any errors. That's kind of the hope. So first things first, we want to make sure that yes, uh, 3000 steam. 3,691 megahertz is what it's running at. And the voltage is running about 1.37 to 1.4. That's due to V-droop. So we are good there. So at this point, what we would do is we would open up like IDA64. Um, you know, there's a couple different programs you can run to see if it's stable. But what we're going to do is we're going to open up, check for temperatures. And then we're going to open up Cinebench. And just kind of, that'll be like a quick and easy, is it semi-stable? Um, you'll obviously want to do a lot more than just that. You know, Ida 64 for, you know, at least a couple hours just to see what the heat output is and stuff like that. So we're going to do a live Cinebench on this CPU so you guys can see how well it runs. So during my overclocking, it ran at approximately 
I think 571 at 3.9 gigahertz, but I was also including some memory overclock. So I definitely don't expect it to necessarily get that high. Um, but I would definitely like to see it north of 500, given the fact that the memory is also at stock as well. And that's what we're going to check next is memory to see if we can get a little bit of overclock on the memory for you guys. Okay, we're in the final part here. And 549, kind of where I expected it to land. So definitely no, no real surprise there. So now we know that the overclock is a little bit stable. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test for memory here. Let's, we're not going to bother saving the benchmark. Go ahead and reboot. Okay, so we are back. We're gonna go to advanced mode. We're gonna go back to AI tweaker. Oop. Not used to the software. Now I'm actually gonna turn AI tweaker, AI tuner to DOCP, that's um, AMD's version of XMP. But I'm gonna bring the memory down a little bit because I know this board doesn't like 2933 that well. And then this should, by default, change all the timings and the memory voltage. So yes, we are good there. So we're going to go ahead and go over to exit here. There we go. Save. Okay. And now we're booting back up here. So we did adjust our memory a little bit. We're going to go ahead and run Cinebench one more time to see if it's base stable. And then we're going to show you how to use IDA64 for those of you that have not used it before. So first things first, get CPU-Z going. Next, get HW Monitor. So we want to see if yep uh, that's going to be right around 2660 which is kind of where we want to be at and then we are going to go ahead and run Cinebench See if the memory made any bit of difference or not. It could or could not for us, so we're gonna do the CPU test. And it begins. Okay, here we are. We're about finished with Cinebench. Just looks to be about one more round to do. And then what we're going to do is we're going to download IDA64 and we're going to see how it all performs. So it jumped up about nine points. Not real. That's kind of what we expected. So no shocker there. We're going to go ahead and X out of Cinebench. Okay, so I just Google search IDA64. Just go to the download section. Oop, go up a little bit. And then we're going to do the self-installing EXE here. I usually download it directly from the site. It usually takes like a minute or two to install. We'll be back.
Okay, I click the self-installing EXE. Obviously, go to yes. English. Next. Make sure you accept any terms and conditions they want to infringe upon you as always. Next. Next. Sure. Install. Finish. I don't want to launch the program, so I'll launch it. Yes, it's only a 30 day free trial. So you go up to tools, and then you go down to stability test. And at least a 30 minute test, give or take, is what you'll be looking for. If it fails, or if the temperatures get too hot, then you'll know that it's not an ideal overclock. So we're sitting about 65 degrees Celsius, and we will check back. So we've only gone about five or six minutes so far, and it's so far good. I mean, we would definitely let it run further. There's definitely no doubt about that. But what happens is, is first check your temperature. So we're hitting about 72, upwards of 74 degrees Celsius. So that's definitely important to know. That's probably the higher end I'd want to go. Now I didn't adjust the fan profile, I don't believe, on this load. But on a stock cooler, that's honestly not that bad. But after about a half an hour, if the temps are not where you want it to be, try lowering the voltage to see if it's still stable. But that is pretty much, in a nutshell, how you overclock on Ryzen. The only difference, and we're going to go ahead and reboot. I'm going to show you here in a second. On X370 and some of the higher end uh, B, AB and B350 uh, boards, the overclocking is a little bit easier. Mash and delete key to get into the BIOS. So the difference is, is you will go to advanced mode, so F7 is when you go up to like AI tweaker or anything for CPU overclocking, oh, come on mouse, there we go. Um, the difference is instead of having this offset mode, a lot of the X370 platforms are gonna have a manual mode here. And the cool thing with that is you can do a direct dial instead of offset, because offset doesn't always work that well. In this case, you know, things like, you know, we got our SOC to 1.2 volts, but that's kind of hard sometimes with offset. And, you know, even though we had our CPU voltage, which for some reason itself undid its own overclock, which is kind of weird, but instead of doing direct dial in like 1.387, which is where I want to be, it's just sitting at 1.387. So, yeah, that's kind of the main difference is you can do a direct dial in instead of actually offset. So, Hopefully, this answered a lot of questions for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really hope this video gave you some insight and at least some, you know, basis for how to actually overclock on Ryzen. It's not very difficult. You have three things to mess with. CPU voltage, CPU ratio, and SOC voltage, and then memory voltage and frequency if you want to adjust those. So the settings I used are not, like, perfect. They're not a bad starting point for most Ryzen chips. As I said, again, my video, keep it below 1.4 for long-term use is what I think AMD is recommending. And the 1.2 uh, volts on the SOC is kind of what everybody else has been doing, 1.2 to 1.1, somewhere in that range. That's been pretty safe, and then 1.35 on the RAM. So good starting point, and then adjust your voltage and clock speed to get it dialed in as perfectly as you can. I didn't go over RAM timings, that'll be a video a little bit later because I need to do a lot more research to give you guys accurate information for that. But thank you guys very much for tuning in. Like if you liked it, if you didn't like it, that's fine. I won't continue to do videos if you guys don't like them. Um, Follow me on PC Budget Solutions on Facebook, so it should be facebook.com slash PC Budget Solutions. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Steve from PC Budget Solutions. I'll see you guys later on down the road.